Okay, so let's jump into the La Signora fight. I'll be going over this whole fight, showing us what's happening and what's, you know, what's the deal with this woman. Uh, I will preface this by saying that I'm not going to be going into too much detail in terms of her mechanics and attacks, seeing as they're all very similar in some way or shape or form. So I'll be explaining some of the mechanics and just saying that all of them are pretty similar. The fight does have two phases with an intermission between them. So you have a first phase, which is the cryo, then you have an intermission, and then you have the pyro phase. And also bear in mind, this fight is also 90% particle effects. So explaining everything in detail is going to be even more difficult. So bear that in mind when you just see a bunch of stuff happening on the screen. Don't know what's happening either. That's partly due to the fight, but I digress. Before we jump into the fight, let's just go over why you would want to kill or do this fight on a weekly basis. So La Signora drops many useful items. So she is a weekly boss, which will go into the battle pass quest. She drops a prototype which if you're lucky enough to get a prototype, she will drop one, one of the five, if you are lucky enough though. And she's the first Inazuma world boss, meaning she'll be dropping the talent level up material past level six for most Inazuma characters going on from now on. Baal being one of the first ones, her level six and over talents require La Senora's drop material. And on top of all that, you can also get either pyro or cryo gemstones because La Signora is dual element, like all the Fatui Harbingers are, you can get either a Pyro or Cryo Gemstone. So starting off this fight, there's one mechanic that I should explain first, and that is to do with her shield, her Cryo application on the ground, and these little Pyro Crystals floating around the room, which change to Hydro in Phase 2, but I'll get to that in the other phase. So 90% of her attacks apply Cryo kind of ground, or ice on the ground, which you need to not stand in. Standing in it isn't good, but you know, it doesn't do much. But when you stand in it, or just generally, you will start to accumulate sheer cold. So the bar above your HP bar will start to go up, which is the sheer cold effect that we've had in the past. And like sheer cold, when that gets to max, you'll start taking massive chunks of your health in damage. The way to get rid of your sheer cold stacks, so the bar above your health, is to stand next to one of these pyro things in, in the corners of the room. But if you're looking to get rid of the stuff on the ground, you want to break the little pyro things and or just clear that quarter of the room of all that cryo stuff on the ground. Another tip about this phase is that she doesn't actually have a shield around her. So the cryo thing or the cryo sphere around her isn't actually a shield. It's just a little visual effect that looks like a shield. So you do still want to attack her during this phase like this and get her down below, I think it's about 20% to transition. In terms of attacks and mechanics, a lot of her attacks are just frontal cones of cryo attacks. Uh, she sends out cryo missiles, uh, puts down cryo landmines. One of her attacks is also she puts in a spear into the ground that explodes after a short while. So just a bunch of cryo attacks. A lot of them are also just frontal kind of cylinder or cone attacks that you want to primarily avoid as well. But the biggest thing is just dealing damage to her, getting her low enough, and also removing all your sheer cold stacks as fast as possible. And when you get this... And in phase one, when you get Signora down to about 10 to 20% HP, she will pretty much encapsulate herself into a kind of ice cocoon. Uh, and at this point, you have to run around the arena collecting these fire butterflies, the little flying pyro things. Uh, they spawn randomly throughout the arena and you just have to go around collecting them and then hit Signora's shield with one of the butterflies kind of floating around you and that will damage her cocoon. This is much like the hi cryo hypostasis fight. And once you do that, you'll break her cocoon after four butterfly hits and that will play the cinematic that transitions you into phase two. Once you get to phase two, she switches to pyro damage and pyrocentric kind of abilities and the little crystals in the corner change from pyro to hydro. Reason for that is because now she starts putting little pyro patches on the ground instead of cryo. Pretty much 90% of her attacks place a bit of pyro on the ground and if you step in the pyro or you get hit by one of her pyro attacks, 
you will accumulate the pyro version of sheer cold i'm unsure if it actually has a name for it yet it could in the future it might now i just don't know you deal with the pyro on the ground the same way you did the cryo on the ground you just want to break the hydro crystals in the corner to clear that quadrant in terms of her actual abilities and mechanics uh, a lot of her attacks are kind of frontal cone attacks using her whip, uh, frontal cylinder attacks using her whip, uh, and she has a few other kind of like meatball-y kind of pyro ball looking things. She has a meteor shower as well. And one her biggest attack, which is pretty much the thing that I look out for the most, is when she torn, turns into a tornado. She does this when she goes to the center of the room and she like screams out one of her voice lines. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's quite loud. But she will go to the center of the room, yell out that little voice line, turn into a tornado and fly around the room. This one's probably the biggest one to look out for is because she pretty much covers the whole room in the pyro ground as well as fires out pyro tornadoes left, right, and center. So I'd recommend standing next to one of the corner crystals just in case and then break it as is she's ending the animation. And that's pretty much the bulk of her mechanics. So now I'm just going to go onto a small clip of me actually killing her, just showing you guys what I do with my team. I think I use the Raiden Shogun, Jing Cho, Zhong Li, and Barbara, I believe. And in this kill clip, I don't actually do many mechanics because... Well, you never actually really do mechanics for bosses if you don't have to. So this is just me blitzing her, seeing and showing you guys the boss as it is. Not a record-breaking time, but, you know, still a smooth kill nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you at the end.
And that's pretty much the La Senora guide video. Not the hardest boss I've ever seen, but also not the easiest or the funnest. But it is what it is. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you enjoy guide type content by me, Vanessa, then hit that subscribe button. Have an amazing day, everyone. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.